This will be the second part of Google Calendar and Google Sheets uh, and App Scripts. Uh, if you haven't watched the first part, go ahead and watch that first because there are some core concepts that I already talked about in there and I'm not going to repeat those. So go ahead and watch that and then come back and watch this one if you haven't yet. So for now what I'm going to do, this is what we had. So the last time what we did, we just were getting the data from Google Calendar. Now what we're going to try to do, uh, we're going to try to put the data from our spreadsheet to the calendar. So right now, if you look at the calendar, it's completely empty. There's nothing on it. So I'm going to try to put some data in the calendar. So I'll go ahead and actually just copy this. I'm going to leave this alone. Open a new tab. Paste this. This is the tab I'm going to be working off of. So there it is. That's my start. And location description and I'm gonna need some data here so I'll start with that some start dates so I'm gonna say eh, this is a good enough start date I kind of like it so I'm gonna leave that and I'll end that on the same day and we'll do two hours later or something so zero eight AM. Perfect. That's the end. The same day, two hours later. Now, this one is going to be, I'm going to do it like two days after that and one hour after the first one. It's good enough. And this should be like two hours. So we'll do nine, nine and we'll end it at nine, right? So I'll go ahead and show this pattern and drag this down for like 10. So there it is. So that should go like two days later, two days later, two days later, two days later. It should be a bunch of events in September that should have a start and end date. It's two hours apart. It's good enough. So location, Chicago, put Chicago for this. And I'll do something like New York. Oh, that does not look like New York at all. So New York, NY, USA, I guess. I'll do that. Copy this paste it here. So basically just some data, right? And I'll just do event one. This will be my event titles. And I'll just scroll this down two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Obviously, if you have real events, you're not, you're going to have the actual titles here. These are going to be the titles for your events, the start and end dates, the location. And we have some sort of description. So I'm going to say event uh, one script uh, you know text it's good enough I'm curious if I can actually drag this down probably not all right so I guess we'll have to use concatenation I'll do join or you know what I'll just do this and some text some text so that's that copy this down I'll just copy and paste the values over it. And now I have some, what I call descriptions. So there it is, basically I have some random data, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna try to put all of these events on a calendar on the appropriate days and times over here. So uh, I'm gonna go to my script editor. I actually already have it open, but otherwise you do tools script editor. And there it is, that's what we did last time. So I'm gonna actually gonna leave this function alone and I'm gonna say add events. That's gonna be the function that's gonna add our events. And the first thing I'm going to do is just read this range to an array. So if you haven't watched 
video about how to read ranges to arrays and how to put arrays back to ranges you can watch that otherwise if you already have this should make sense but it's pretty easy and straightforward so my range is from 8 to through e 10 but we want this to be dynamic so we want to figure out how many rows of data we have and go based on that so i'm going to do variable lr for last row is going to be uh, basically I need the spreadsheet, so I'll just copy some of this stuff because I don't want to type all of that. So I want to get the current spreadsheet. That goes right there. And we'll get our spreadsheet and we'll get the last row. So this is very similar to what we did before in here. Now something is, oh, <laughs> I forgot to type the word function. Like it's not highlighting, right? Okay, so we're good. So we got the spreadsheet, which is our correct spreadsheet, uh, an active sheet in it. We got the last row. Now we're gonna get that range and we'll assign it to a variable. So I'm gonna go variable data uh, equals two and the data is gonna come from our spreadsheet and I'm going to say get range and I could have done this number syntax, but I feel extremely lazy today, I guess. So I'm gonna go with concatenation. So that's A2 through E10, okay? So that's A2 through E10, right? That's the range over here. But instead of typing 10 here, I'm going to say, let's, remove the 10 and plus this LR, which is the last row variable, which should just create. Oh, you know what? I do want the E. The number will come from the last row. Okay, so that should get the data from that range from A2 through E, however many columns we have. And now if we simply just logger dot log our data, Oh, look at that. It just matched the variable name. Uh, there it is. I'm going to save and I'll go ahead and just run this to make sure this works. I want to run this get events function. Now go under view log and no logs found. Da, 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 add to your project. Okay, that's weird. So let's try this again. Mm, so, oh, you know what? I forgot to do get values here because I highlighted the range. I forgot to get the values out of it. All right, so run add events. That's the one we were looking for and logs. And there it is, event start and location description. Okay, that's that should not be there. Let's see. Oh, and what I did, I actually let's put this back. So A two through E ten. Let's try this again. Let's, let me change this. Run add events. So view logs, there it is, so now it works. So we got our event one, and then we got the Thursday. So basically we put it in a JavaScript array. That's what we have as a return. And that's just fine. So now what we want to do is once we have that array, we're gonna loop through that array. So let's do a for loop. I'm curious if for each works in. No. So I was hoping new JavaScript functions might work, but not really. That's fine. Var, var i equals zero. 
And then we have I that should be less than the length of our data. Length and we're gonna do I plus plus. And we should have our array just to make sure this works again. I'm going to do logger dot log and I'll do that row in my data. That should be fine. I'm going to save this run. View my logs, and there it is, the first line, the second line, the third line, the fourth line. So that works just fine. Fine with that. So there's probably more elegant ways to handle this, but uh, I'll just do this short because we really want to explore how to really work with a calendar app more than all of this other stuff. So now that we have our data, so if I did, the, that's the first row, but if I get the first element in the first row, something like this. So let's do this add events function again. You'll see that it gets the title because the first thing in our, let me just remove this and run that, the old one again to explain what's going on here. So this is the array we have uh, each time it runs, right? So this is the first row and the first thing in that first row array, which is this is the whole array. The first one is the event title. The second one is the start date. The third one is the, and so on. So to get the title, I just have to get the first element, which is element number zero. So that gets us the title. That's good. So now what we want to do, first of all, we want to get to our calendar. So again, some of the lines are going to be the same. So I'm going to get the calendar by its ID. And I'll store it in a variable. So I'm going to copy that. I'll pull this over here. That's going to be my calendar. And here I'm going to say, so that's my calendar and this calendar has some there it is create all day event all day event create event title start time end time so title there is this one title start time end time object options and it seems like this is the one we want to use because we have more than just the title, start time, end time. We also have location and description. And I assume that options is going to be it, but we'll have to look it up. So I'll go under their documentation, create event. There it is. Options. And there it is. It says uh, event and there it is, the options, yeah, location. So that's good. Now what does it say? If no time zone is specified, the time values are interpreted in the context of script time zone, which may be different from the calendar's time zone. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I would have skipped that, I guess. And these are parameters. Oh, so there are title. That's good. Oh, there it is. So those are the options we can do description location guests and do we want to send invites or not okay so that's good now uh let's go for it so uh apparently the first thing we want is the title so the title we already know is this that's good now we're going to need the start time. And apparently, according to documentation, if you don't want any funny stuff happening, you want to do the time zone. Now, I'm not sure whether the date that I'm getting in that array here is a, an actual date object or that's a string object. 
but it seems like that's an actual date object, which means we might be able to just use the this and that should convert it to the time we need so we didn't, wouldn't have to even worry about that. That would be nice. So let's try that and see what happens. So if that's the date, so I'll just go ahead and just plug them in to see what happens. So the start date is going to be the first one. The end date is going to be the second one. And then we have the options. So what are the, how do we do the options? So the options is an object like this. I'll copy this. Go back here, paste that. So as options, we're going to have location, which is actually the next thing we have. So that's perfect. So instead of this, the moon, it's going to be the next thing here, which will be the third one. But that's just going to get us the location. We also have description. So that means we have to do a comma here. And then let's go look it up. So there it is. It's just description. That's good. So we're going to do the same way description. So it's the JavaScript object here. And that's going to be the fourth column here. So that's the one, two, three, four create event that's that so let's, let me just make this a little better format it so that goes here I'll indent it a little further right there that should be fine so that's that I'm actually gonna just try this to see if it works this way there's a chance that this dates may not work so we'll have to see so i'm going to save that i'll go ahead and say this is my this add events so run add events let's see what we get so that ran without saying anything but we have to go to the calendar so we have all the events on the calendar. Now what I'm curious about is the time accurate or not. Because the first one is 6 a.m. All right, so let's go and see if that's there, right? It's 6 a.m. 9, 7. So 9, 7, 6 a.m. through 8 a.m. Perfect. It's in New York, USA. We have that, we have the description, like we should have. That's perfect, so the next one should be from seven through nine. Seven through nine, event two, and that should be in Chicago, and that should be this. Let's do this. Seven through nine, Chicago, event two, some text. Wow, perfect, so that worked, so. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, but there it is. I, we have all of our events basically from our spreadsheet populated to our calendar, just like that. And if I now wanted to get those, if I go and run our old script, which was this get events one, I should really pull all those events from that calendar. Perfect. So that's it. So that covers this. So that's how we can actually add a bunch of events from our Google Sheets to our calendar really fast and easy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.